Hello friends, this is uh, Danwin Shetty. Let's uh, quickly di discuss uh, circle of Willis. Now, this is midbrain, this is pons, and this is medulla. Okay. After this, see these two are vertebral artery. They are forming the basilar artery at the pontomedullary junction, and that is further getting continued as posterior cerebral artery. Now, tell me which part of the brain stem is related to cerebellum? Is it midbrain, pons, or medulla? It is the pons which is related to the cerebellum. It is the pons which is related to the cerebellum. So blood sample of the cerebellum should come from the basilar artery it should come from the basilar artery and the one artery is coming superiorly and one artery is coming inferiorly from the basilar artery to the cerebellum and those arteries are the superior one is called a superior cerebral artery and the inferior one is called as inferior cerebral artery okay this is superior one is called superior cerebral artery and the inferior one is called as inferior cerebral artery but the inferior cerebral artery is given a proper name that is anterior inferior cerebral artery that is we pronounce it as ica and so the pica is coming just below it and that is coming from the vertebral artery that's coming from the vertebral artery and this basal artery is further getting continued as posterior cerebral artery remember one point okay you see below this below this line right below this line it's all cerebellum okay above this it is all cerebrum okay so don't bring here cerebellar okay this is a cerebrum and this is cerebellar okay great now i'll repeat it again there are two arteries that is vertebral artery joining together from basilar artery okay in the pons and that getting further continued as posterior cerebral artery okay and cerebellum is related to pons so since basilar artery is also related to pons okay the blood supply to cerebellum is coming from the basilar artery two arteries are there one is superior and inferior cerebral artery inferior cerebral artery is called as anterior inferior cerebral artery ica just below it we get that pica that is posterior inferior cerebral artery and that is coming from the vertebral arteries great now after that let's come to the anterior circulation i'll just orient you see this is one hemisphere of the brain this is the second hemisphere of the brain now you tell me the lateral side of the brain is supplied by which artery okay it's middle cerebral artery the lateral side is supplied by middle cerebral artery and the medial side is supplied by anterior cerebral artery remember the middle cerebral artery does not supply the medial side middle cerebral artery supplies the lateral side so what does this artery becomes it becomes a middle cerebral artery okay what does this artery becomes it becomes the anterior cerebral artery and both are coming from this artery that is internal carotid artery it's coming from internal carotid artery okay great we are done with the circle of willis only thing is we are not formed the circle and uh, here are two connections which will form the circles so this is uh, anterior communicating artery and this is posterior communicating artery okay got it right great now next thing we have to know about circle of willis is, is its clinical importance and the most important clinical uh, feature importance of uh, this circle of willis is a uh, berry aneurysm it is berry aneurysm okay see first point you need to know about berry aneurysm is it is more common in the anterior circulation okay second point you need to know about berry aneurysm is it cause if it ruptures it causes subarachnoid hemorrhage third point you need to know about berry aneurysm is uh, in the unruptured state it can compress the neighboring structures it can compress the optic chiasma causing visual symptoms it can compress the oculomotor now causing paralysis of that particular now okay and the fourth point about berry aneurysm is i told you it's more common anterior circulation and the most common are uh, vessel is anterior communicating artery